Hey everyone, it's Chris here. I'm the owner of Rocketman Tech and also the founder of the Launchpad Meetups. Uh, we meet every month to talk about relevant Apple and Jamf news. Um, I wanted to create some more freeform content to go over some new features in Jamf or stuff in the Apple world that we're encountering just so you can get some more information on like kind of what's happening in the trenches right now. So um, just a little background on us, Rocketman Tech, we manage Jamf servers for large enterprise companies, universities, K through 12 schools, fast growing tech companies, and kind of everyone across the board. Anyone that has complex use cases for their Jamf servers or just looking to get the most out of Jamf. Um, so I want to talk about things that we're encountering out in the wild on a regular basis. And the first feature I want to talk about is Jamf's new Lapse feature. Uh, there has been a lot of stuff happening around this uh, with Jamf's management account and everything like that. Um, man, I could have a giant discussion on just the history of the management account itself and everything that went into that. But right now I want to focus specifically on this feature and a very specific problem that we've been encountering when trying to implement it. Um, also for full disclosure, we have our own rotating backdoor admin account that we've made. We call it break glass admin. Um, it's very customizable, allows you to set a password that's either memorable or complex depending on your security requirements and user experience requirements. Um, we've been looking to transition to Jamf's version because we like to use Jamf's stuff when it, all possible. We don't like to reinvent the wheel, although we often seem to a lot of the times because we're looking for something very unique that maybe Jamf or the other solutions out there do not offer. Um, so let me first show you what this feature looks like, why it's so cool, and why it might not work in all situations. Okay, so here I have my test server. This is one of our computers here that's assigned to me. Um, if you want to see how this looks, this is basically it. I have our management account. This is uh, the source is the Jamf binary. It can be the, either be through the Jamf binary, which is through the user initiated enrollment section, or through the pre-stage. You can do either or. Um, and that's done through an MDM command when the computer is enrolled to a pre-stage. So if I want to view this password, I can do it right in the Jamf GUI. I click view. Um, viewing the password will cause the password to rotate in one hour. So this password will be rotated. So I'm even going to show it up on the screen because it's going to be rotated in an hour. So by the time I post this video, you know, that password is not going to be it. Also, you're probably not going to break into my house and log into my test Mac anyway. But there it is. I can copy it to the clipboard. All this is really neat. But the next part of this, I think, is the best part. And that's the fact that there is auditing for this. So if I go down here um, to manage local account history, we can see that less, less than a minute ago, the password was viewed. And then you can see the next event was the password automatically rotated. So that's pretty cool. I can see that auditing um, with, with our rotating backdoor admin account because we're basically just using an extension attribute in Jamf, unless you're storing the password somewhere else, there's really no auditing to viewing it because it's just static. There's no button you have to click. Another great thing about this is you can choose who has access to the password. So with our current workflow, um, anyone who has read access to computers will have access to that backdoor admin account password because it's just an extension attribute. I can't, in the Jamf Pro user accounts and group settings, uh, specify that specific thing. However, in here, because it's something you have to view, just like the recovery key, it is a variable that you can set so that only certain admins with elevated privileges to Jamf Pro have access to that, not just anyone with read access to computers. So a lot of amazing features. but. Um, couple things. Uh, one thing is you can't set the requirements of this password. So it's going to be 29 characters. It's going to be alphanumeric, hard to read. Um, as you saw when I clicked that, this is not 
the easiest password to give over the phone. It's got dashes in it. It's, like I said, alphanumeric. At least it's not lowercase, uppercase, but it's still a lot of characters. So, not the greatest or most readable to read over the phone. Um, you cannot make it static either. It's always rotating, which I guess is more of a feature than anything. Um, there's also no real way at this point to make it file vault encrypted without a sec separate script. But I mean, we have similar complications if we're making our own backdoor admin account as well. This one just becomes a little bit more difficult because as this password cycles, it's not going to maintain that file vault status. Whereas with our workflow, we can kind of do it because it's initiated by a policy. So we can make sure that like we keep it file vault enabled as we change the password. I digress though. It's still a really cool feature, but the problem we're running into is not necessarily in the limitations of this. It's how do we get it on the computer? So this is another computer in our environment. And if you notice, it doesn't have any account here. Well, why is that? Well, it's because once this computer was set up, um, the ability to deploy that management account or the pre-stage account weren't set up. And this is actually something we're dealing with with a lot of our servers because Jamf had a product issue a while ago that was causing issues if you were deploying the management account with enrollments. So we ended up turning it off because it was like, well, this isn't even needed anymore. We don't use it. We have our own backdoor admin account that's you know rotating. So we have a much better solution for this. Um, and the management account was basically deprecated for any real use um, probably five years ago. I mean, unless you were using Jamf Remote, which only worked on a local network. So there really hasn't been a need for this management account for a while. Um, and we didn't want the security risk of having a static password on the computers um, for both the pre-stage and the one for Jamf. And it was creating issues at one point, so we just turned it off on all our servers. Um, but now we're coming into the point where it's like, well, how do you deploy this account if it's not already on the computers? And the answer that Jamf gives isn't great. So the m most official answer that I've gotten from Jamf is you have to wipe and re-enroll the computer. Clearly that's not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> it's not a solution to wipe and re-enroll the computer. That can't be the feature. That can't be the right way to do it. So there's a less official way, which seems like it's actually kind of official, which is redeploying the management framework. Now I'm showing the Jamf API because this is currently the only way to do this, um, which is fine. We can use the API. You can actually, if you, this area is at all intimidating, it's pretty easy to use. Um, right here, you just enter your username and password. It will authorize you a token. Um, and then you can do this all through the GUI now, which is pretty sweet. Um, so I don't actually need to do any scripting to use the API. I can do it right from here. I can do a post command. I can't do this with every part of the API, um, but when you're doing a simple post command like this, it's a very easy way to do it. So what I need to do is get the computer ID, which is up here at 17. You can always get that in the address bar. Um, you can also do a search and get it that way, but this is just easier. So I need to click try it out throw my ID in there, and then click Execute. Now this is gonna redeploy the Jamf framework. A couple caveats with this though. Um, let's say you are using macOS onboarding. I'm just gonna, I might test the computer next to me, you can't see it, but I wanna make sure it's logged in so you can see this work. Um, but if you're using macOS onboarding, you need to check this box to launch self-service when done. And what you're actually doing when you redeploy the management framework is you are re-enrolling a computer. So you've got to turn off re-enrollment settings if you want to do this, or all your policies will rerun if you have that turned on. You got to make sure you don't have anything set for the enrollment trigger or set up some complex smart groups to make sure that your current fleet um, isn't going to run the re-enrollment triggers. But there's not really a good way around this. If you have macOS onboarding, you need to launch self-service when, when done in order for this to work. Um, 
there are some workarounds to that, but they aren't. They they don't work as well as this specific checkbox to launch it when done. So this, first of all, this workaround is not great because of a bunch of different reasons. It's kind of like, um, <laughs> for lack of a better me metaphor, trying to kill a cockroach with a hand grenade uh, or kill a cockroach with a shotgun. I don't remember how it goes. But uh, like it's, it's too heavy of a hammer for a very simple thing we're trying to do, which is just deploy a single account which through a jam policy should be easy, but it's not something we can do at this point. But here's even the worst part is, and we'll see uh, with this test, I've seen this in other servers. Um, I haven't tested it in my server yet to see if we're running into this problem. This actually did work this time. So this did deploy the account, but I have seen a lot of other servers where this hasn't deployed the account. And I've worked with jam support. Um, we even have the Jamf Enterprise support for a lot of our clients, and there doesn't seem to be a clear workaround to do this. So there's currently, we have clients that want to use this feature, and without wiping and re-enrolling their entire fleet of thousands of Macs, there's no way of doing it um, currently at this point. Hopefully, this gets fixed. I don't know why it works on some servers and not others. But let me go quickly through um, a couple other things in here in case you're just curious about this feature. If you are kind of starting out on a new server or you already have the management account on all your computers, you might not be running into this problem, in which case you can probably use this feature now without much, too much configuration. Uh, so what do we need to do? We need to, first of all, make sure we are setting up a local administrator account through user-initiated enrollment. This is the, the one way of doing it. Um, through the management account, or you can do it through a pre-stage as well um, by configuring this and say, create managed local administrator account uh, during macOS setup assistant. So this of course will only work on newly enrolled computers specifically if they go through the setup assistant. So only through DEP will you get this account. That's why this is a good one to have in place in case you have computers not enrolled through DEP. Um, and then one other thing you need to do here is enable laps for pre-stage accounts. So in this security section under computer management, this is a new thing for um, 11.5. So this just came out. Um, but first of all, enable laps for pre-stage accounts. You can do that before this could only be done through the API. And then also the pass rotation interval, you can set this. Um, you can set it to never and kind of make it a static, unique password on each computer. Um, or you can rotate it every 7, 30, 90, or 180 days. Um, it's kind of, this kind of doesn't matter. I mean, we kind of set that at seven days just because um, it seems a little bit more secure. But until someone actually retrieves that password, that password isn't there. And after it's retrieved, it gets automatically rotated. and. Um, Rotation after viewing interval is, you know, you can make that one hour, three hours, 12 hours, one day, three days, seven days. And this just means after you view it, how long until it rotates. Now, that kind of depends on what you're using this password for. Are your technicians just using it to log into a computer? If that's the case, um, probably only need an hour. Are you trying to give it to someone else over the phone? If that's the case, an hour is probably fine as well because they're going to enter it right away when they're on the phone. But maybe you're giving it to someone by email or Slack message, in which case you might want a little bit extra time to make sure that they can receive the message and then enter the password before they can get into the computer. So that's why you might feel, uh, use these different things. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to show you our break glass admin account. So I'm not gonna show you the actual script, that's on our GitHub. Um, but here's where we can set our different parameters. So we can set, just like you can with Jamf, you can set the username. We can also set a full name, which will be the name that shows up, especially if it's file vault encrypted and it's showing up on the main login screen. Um, and then you can see the, uh, number of K 
characters that we're setting. So we're using what's called NATO here for a pass method. Um, and what that means is the phonetic alphabet, there's a lot of different ways we can set it, but this is a more readable password. And then we're setting it to five characters. And then we're storing that in an extension attribute. So that's kind of the solution we've had. And we've been using for probably five years now, but um, yeah, it doesn't have any of that auditing or other stuff. So as a recap, uh, the features built into the Jamf GUI automatically rotates the password after viewing. And then there's auditing within the Jamf GUI. And I should add one more here, um, segment access to viewing the password and the logs for that matter. Um, but what are the limitations? Well, you can't really set that password to have any other randomized settings except being a 29 character password um, alphanumeric, right? Um, and there's that really no easy way to deploy it post enrollment. So if you don't have it on the computer, you have to redeploy the, the management framework, which is a little bit of a heavy hammer. There are some ways you can get around that. Um, I didn't show that in this video. But um, there are some ways to do that. But even with, you might run into this PI, which there seems to be no rhyme or reason to yet why this is happening. And there's currently no workaround. So if you run into the PI um, or you're having issues deploying this with the management framework, please put that in the comments uh, just so we can get more exposure to that. And talk to your Jamf rep and mention this PI right here just so you can get added to that. There's more exposure so that they understand that this is a problem that they probably need to deal with right away. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for joining the video.